on this exciting 10th episode of Comic Misconceptions. We're going to cover some Spider-Man stuff, so hurry up with the title, because I can't wait. I'm too excited. We don't have time for this. I'm too excited to wait. Spider-Man is my favorite, and I have some great stuff that I want to talk to you guys about. Starting with last week's trivia question, which was, Peter Parker's dentist is related to what other significant character in the Spider-Man universe? Rob on YouTube says that the dentist was a member of the Band of Baddies, which is a fan fantastic name, but he was also identified as the brother of the burglar who killed Ben Parker. Very impressive, sir. This question was a little tricky for a couple reasons. Not only do we not know the full name of the dentist, but we also don't know the full name of the burglar who killed Uncle Ben. It's possible that it's Carradine because he has a daughter named Jessica Carradine, but we're not fully sure. In Spider-Man 3, they said it was Dennis Carradine, but Again, that's Spider-Man 3. I don't think we can really take that into canon. I mean, that was the movie that gave us this gem. Regardless of the burglar's name, he still killed Uncle Ben, but before his tragic death, he was able to pass on those words of wisdom to Peter that would resonate with him forever. Those words, of course, being with great power from his great responsibility. However, almost everything I just said was wrong. Uncle Ben did not introduce this popular catchphrase to the world. In fact, it was an unnamed narrator of the story that spoke these words into existence. And it wasn't even really those words. The often misquoted line actually reads, with great power, there must also come great responsibility. It's a little more wordy, sure, but if you want to be accurate, there you go. That's not to undermine the fact that Uncle Ben did influence Peter throughout his life. I mean, Peter's name is Peter Benjamin Parker, but it was almost Peter Palmer. And by almost, I mean it was for one entire issue. Let me explain. Spider-Man first appeared in Amazing Fantasy number 15, which I have a reprint of right here. Spider-Man then went on to have his own comic, Amazing Spider-Man, and since the character was so new, they wanted to just tell the stories and not get bogged down with those pesky details like last names. <laughs> so in the first issue of Amazing Spider-Man, Peter's full name was written to be Peter Palmer. It was quickly fixed after that, but there is an interesting allusion to it quite recently. In Superior Spider-Man number 9, Doc Ock and Peter Parker were fighting for control over their shared brain when Doc Ock, oh you don't know this story? It's pretty simple, really. All you need to know is that Doc Ock was on his deathbed, so he sent a tiny robot to swap him and Spider-Man's minds out, so that Doc Ock was in Spider-Man's body, and Peter Parker was in Doc Ock's dying body. Now Doc Ock is claiming to be on the side of good as he fights as the superior Spider-Man, but there is a little tiny bit of Peter still left in the brain. When Doc Ock finds out, he goes inside of his brain to fight the residual bits of Peter Parker that are left over. He then commences a mind wipe to get rid of all of the memories of Peter Parker, and a desperate Spider-Man tries to hold on to the only memories that he knows, including his own name, which he tries to shout out to himself so that he won't forget it, but he ends up shouting, Peter Palmer. And it all connects back. But like I said, that mistake was made back in the early days of that character. It's not like they would forget the name Spider-Man, would they? <laughs> right? Well, Actually, just two issues after they call him Peter Palmer, Doc Ock refers to him as not Spider-Man, but Superman. I, I, don't, I don't even know what to say to that one. But it's not the name that makes them the hero, it's the tragedies the writers put them through. And one of the most tragic things to ever happen to Spider-Man, I think, is when his first love, Gwen Stacy, dies in Amazing Spider-Man 121. Green Goblin throws her off a bridge and Spider-Man shoots his webs out to try and catch her, and then tragedy strikes. The word snap appears right by her neck, and by the time Spider-Man pulls her up, Gwen Stacy is dead. But what caused her to die? I mean, by first glance, you might think that it was whiplash from Spider-Man's web catching her so suddenly, hence the snap right by her neck. But Green Goblin goes on to say that it wasn't the webs that killed her, it was the shock of the fall and that she actually died before Spider-Man could do anything. 
and in some prints, the word snap is taken completely out of the picture. So what is the definitive cause behind Gwen Stacy's death? Well, in Amazing Spider-Man 125, in a letters section in the back of the book, lies the definitive truth. The letter addressing the cause of Gwen Stacy's death clearly states, and I quote, it saddens us to have to say that the whiplash effect she underwent when Spidey's webbing stopped her so suddenly was, in fact, what killed her. So the mystery is over, and it might be a little tough to swallow for some of us, but you know what's never tough to swallow is Aunt May's wheat cakes, which you can find the recipe to in Untold Tales of Spider-Man from 1996. Props to my friend and fan of the show, Killian, for pointing me to this. I found way too much amusement from it. Probably as much enjoyment as Spider-Man gets from swinging around the city going thwippity thwip thwip, which actually, uh, Marvel owns the word thwip. So, I'm probably gonna get sued now. But, uh, not before we move on to the weekly trivia challenge! <laughs> So we like to encourage you guys to suggest topics for future episodes, and boy, do we have a lot of them. And I do want to say that we are getting to them, but we have a lot to go through first. But that being said, I did promise someone that this episode here was going to be about a specific character, and it wasn't. So I feel a little bad, and I'm going to make it known to you right now, to the entire world, that next week we will be tackling this character, Dr. Strange is not who we'll be talking about. I'm sure we'll get to him later eventually, but he is known as the Sorcerer Supreme of Earth, but there is a scientific counterpart to that known, of course, as the Scientist Supreme. So this week's trivia challenge is what Marvel character is Earth's Scientist Supreme? I would also like to state that these trivia challenges are supposed to be a test of your knowledge, not a test of your search engine skills. So honor system, guys. And about prizes, I really do want to send stuff to you guys for getting these right, but the problem is I don't have any money to ship anything to you guys I mean I literally have three dollars to my name so for now the prize will be meaningless nerd points that aren't redeemable for anything and could possibly cause swelling if not treated properly in which case I would see a doctor if swelling persists for more than 24 hours either way get started on this week's trivia challenge you old you old scamp <laughs> And with that, the 10th episode of Comic Misconceptions is about to come to a close. Here's to another 10 more. But before we do leave, I have some things I need to wrap up. Alderaan beat out Krypton for saddest planet death. Not really a surprise there. Secondly, a huge thanks is in order for you guys who are leaving us feedback on our videos and sharing and subscribing. We have just seen a huge bump in subscribers and comments this past week alone. And it's just so great to see that you guys like what we do and are giving us feedback so that we can continue to make great things in the future. And please subscribe to Nerdsync Productions right here on YouTube for more comic misconceptions as well as some other great videos that we put out on a weekly basis. You can also like Nerdsync Productions on Facebook. You can follow us on Twitter. You can follow me on Twitter right there. And of course, please leave your comments and questions and suggestions for future episodes in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you guys. As we said, we love taking your suggestions and molding them into our future episodes. We already have a lot, but definitely do it anyway. We, we just love to see what you guys uh, are interested in. So please do that and share with this video with your friends who also like comic books because, you know, we all like to gather together and just talk about the stuff we love. So join us here next week and hopefully every week for another episode of Comic Misconceptions where we talk about more things that you thought you knew about comics. See ya. We also don't know the full name of the burglar who shot in the burglar? The burglar. It's like an igloo made of burgers. I don't know, that's, that's probably not, it sounds good. Regardless of the burger's name, burger, I just said burger. I'm still thinking about that igloo, burger, the burglar.